What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. I wanted to break down our patient assessment skill sheet. Um, if you want to follow along, the link will be in the description below. We also made two videos, one for cardiac, one for respiratory, and there's going to be more coming along, but um, they'll be on the upper right hand corner. Click on those links if you want to watch a cardiac assessment or a respiratory assessment. Um, so with these, with these skill sheets, any patient assessment, it kind of breaks down into a few parts. There's scene size up, you know, making sure that the scene is safe, you have your BSI on, you call for any additional resources if you feel like you need them. Um, and then you go into what's called the primary assessment. And a few things are under this primary assessment. So there's gonna be something called the general impression where you make a first impression um, upon entry to the scene. And uh, you establish things like, is this medical in nature? Is this trauma in nature? Um, what's the chief complaint? Is the patient responsive? Are they unresponsive? Are they alert and oriented times four? That's all general impression. After that is what's called the ABCs or airway breathing circulation. Um, you can also include D for disability if there's any um, altered mental status uh, change. And so as we go down the ABCs, if we find anything that's remarkable or inadequate with the ABCs, we are not moving on to another section. We must fix the ABCs before we move on. So if the patient needs their airway opened, we're gonna provide that head tilt chin lift or modified jaw thrust. If they need something suctioned out of their mouth, we're gonna provide that suction. In breathing, if they're in respiratory distress, we're gonna provide oxygen. And then where there's a whole nother video for low flow versus high flow, or if you're gonna to need to provide positive pressure ventilation, that's all in breathing. In circulation, is the patient bleeding out? Um, what are their skin parameters? What's their pulse ox, right? That's all figured out in the primary. And if you look at the very bottom of circulation, the last point of circulation is making a transport decision. And so if your patient is stable, we can pretty much stay and play, right? We can stay on the scene and treat the patient. If they're relatively unstable, if there's anything wrong within the ABCs, if there's anything that you had to correct, we're gonna do what's called load and go. We're gonna load the patient onto the stretcher and then we're gonna continue the rest of our assessment in the back of the ambulance on the way to the hospital. And so after that, the next section, next section um, falls under another category called the secondary assessment. So we just finished the primary, all, right, all the life threats are taken care of. The next section is called the secondary assessment. The secondary assessment is an umbrella term for things like history taking, like sample and OPQRST, vital signs, um, as well as the focused secondary, which is dependent on their chief complaint. If someone has chest pain, they're gonna, we're gonna run down a cardiac assessment. If they have shortness of breath, we're gonna run down a respiratory assessment. If they're altered mental status, we have an AMS secondary assessment, okay? All of that falls under the umbrella term secondary assessment. And so with the first um, history taking section, OPQRST, some common mistakes that I see students make um, is confusing onset versus time. And so onset falls under two, two words, sudden or gradual. So you're gonna ask the patient, did this issue come on suddenly or did it come on gradually? Okay, whereas time, you'd ask the patient, how long have you been experiencing this issue? Um, P in OPQRST is two things, provocation and palliation. And that's two opposite ends of the spectrum, right? What provokes your pain? What makes it worse? And what's, what makes it better? You know, I'm sure some of you have heard something called palliative care. Um, what eases your, your pain, your issue? Quality. You want to ask the patient, in their own words, can they describe the issue um, at hand? And typically this is for pain. So, you know, does it feel like a crushing pain? Does it feel like a pressure? Does it feel like a sharp stabbing pain? Things like that. Radiation, you're gonna ask, um, does the pain or issue spread anywhere? Is it global or is it localized to one specific area? Severity, you're gonna ask the patient to quantify their issue. So on a scale of zero to 10, one to 10, um, 10 being the worst, I like to say 10's like childbirth. Um, 
how bad is it? Right? Um, time, how long have they been experiencing? And, and then any additional symptoms. So that's all, all OPQRST. The next thing is ample, sample. And S is just for signs and symptoms. So do they have any allergies? This includes things, um, drugs and other things. So berries, nuts, um, antibiotics, IV dye, anything like that. Are they on any medications? And have they been compliant with these medications? Past pertinent medical history. Do they have a medical history? And if someone does have a medical history, maybe their current chief complaint is an exacerbation of said history. Last oral intake. Um, when's the last time they had something to eat or drink? And events leading up to present history. So what were they doing at the time that this chief complaint first became present? Um, the next section, it's focus assessment, and it's dependent on their chief complaint. And so the current unit that we're on, unit two, is respiratory cardiac. And so you can flip to the page, or there's tabs at the bottom of that Google Doc. Um, you're going to go down that respective focused secondary assessment dependent on their chief complaint. Right? If they had an allergic reaction, we have a focused secondary for that allergic reaction. If they have abdominal pain, we have a focused assessment for abdominal pain. So on and so forth, okay? So use the respective focused secondary assessment for that chief complaint. After you do the focused secondary assessment, go back, go back to this page, and then you're gonna go do vital signs, right? A lot of people try to get a full heart rate, a full respiratory rate, all the way in the primary. In the primary, when we're doing the life threats, in breathing, in circulation, you assess someone's pulse for three to five seconds, and all you're assessing for is quality and relative rate. You're not sitting there for 30 seconds trying to obtain a full pulse, a full heart rate, a full respiratory rate. We don't have the time for that, all right? These are life threats, and if something's an issue, we'll fix it right then and there. Um, so in vital signs, you're gonna take a blood pressure, you're going to take a pulse rate, respiratory rate, um, blood sugar, blood glucose, pulse ox, and then after that, you're going to state a field impression. Don't confuse this with the general impression, the, the, the impression that you made early on, which is your first impression of the patient. A field impression is your idea of what's potentially going on with this patient. As an EMT, as a paramedic, we don't diagnose, but we can have a pretty good sense of what's going on with that patient, and we call that a field impression. The next section um, is treatment, and that's going to be also dependent on uh, the focused secondary assessment and the chief complaint that they have. After that, the last part is reassessment. We're going to reassess everything, their ABCs, their chief complaint. Are they still currently complaining of their chief complaint? We're going to reassess their vital signs, so their blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, pulse ox all over again. We're going to check our interventions. Maybe sometimes we might have to be able to do a redose of a certain medication. Um, and the very last part is providing an accurate verbal report. So this whole time, if you're team leader, you should be taking notes. And you, you are setting the pace of the whole assessment. And if you can't um, write fast enough, then slow your assessment down, right? You have 15 minutes. So you should be able to take notes. And with all your notes, you should be able to give an accurate verbal report, right? So an example verbal report, if we were doing, let's say a respiratory patient, we're calling Northwestern. Hey, Northwestern, this is UIC EMS Ambulance One. We have an 18-year-old male initially of, uh, complaining of respiratory distress. They're currently ANO times four. Upon arrival, we heard wheezes bilaterally. We then gave 2.5 milligrams of albuterol um, via nebulizer on six liters per minute of oxygen. Um, pulse ox was initially 89%. It is currently at 95%. Um, skin parameters are normal times three. Lung sounds are currently clear bilaterally. Um, history of asthma, no known allergies. Our ETA to your destination is about five minutes. Um, do you have any other orders? And if they have any other questions or orders, um, they would tell you. Um, other than that, they'll say, see you in five minutes. All right. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. All right. I'll see you in the next video.